Hello and welcome back. You know, over the course of my life, I've had the opportunity to talk with management, with owners, and, and you name it, asking particular questions, oft times asking the same question, and getting different answers. And what that's taught me over the years is that sometimes a little bit of investigation into what you're being told is a good thing. As a matter of fact, it, it's always a good thing not to just take somebody's word for it. And freeze drying is exactly the same way. Most people, they're not interested in investigating to see what they can do to ask themselves the questions like, do I have to use this much energy? Does it have to dry this long? Does, uh, is there a more efficient way to do things? Most people, when they get a freeze dryer, they want to they wanna come home, they want to set it up, they want to follow the instructions and they want to have a, a freeze-dried product that they can store for, for, for 30 years. But the problem with that is there are um, tips and tricks and things that you can do to be uh, more efficient, uh, to make your equipment last longer, to um, not use so much energy. And so over the course of the last few months, what I've tried to do is kind of focus on that side of it a little bit. Okay, and that's exactly what I'm doing here. We're talking about something that I've designed and engineered and put together. Uh, this is an inline air filter that you put between your vacuum pump and the freeze dryer. I've ran uh, probably six or eight batches on it. It works very, very well. And now I'd like to show you how you can build one. This is going to be a three part series. This first part, we're going to discuss the why. In the second part, we'll talk about the parts list and the prefab. And in the third part, we'll actually, I'll actually demonstrate how I built this one right here. Okay, and so with that, I'm Evan Rowell, and this is Critical Thinking about Filtration. Okay, before we get started, I want to show you something. I want to show you what kind of led me to the idea that having a inline filtration unit is a good idea, okay? What I have here is waste oil, and when a batch finishes, I will tip the vacuum pump forward a little bit, and that water that's built up in there and settled to the bottom will come right to where the valve is, and I'll open up the valve and I'll drain the till oil starts coming out, but I always get water, and this much down here this is water, probably over, you know, a lot of batches, okay? But what I have here, what I want you to see, I want you to take a look at this picture. There is a layer of sludge in here, okay? And the oil that's on top of it here is dirty, and uh, it doesn't look like it's going to separate out. You can see that sludge, although it's very, very thick down here, you can see it is still permeated the oil, and it is until you get to the very top where the oil actually begins to clear. And uh, this got me thinking when it comes to equipment and the necessity of filtration. When you think about it, for as long as there's been machinery, people have felt the need to filter the air before it gets into their machinery. I mean, cars are a classic example of that. In industry, you're going to find filtration units that filter air and water, for that matter of fact, uh, but we're going to talk particularly about air because air carries a lot of impurities, okay? It carries dust. It can carry particulate. Um, you get particulates down around uh, 5 to 10 microns, and it will remain suspended in the air, and it'll, it's going to go where that air is going to go. And after I saw this, I come to the conclusion that it was necessary, or at least it would be a good idea, if there was some kind of a filtration unit between the vacuum pump and the freeze dryer. And so over the course of a certain amount of time, the first thing I did was I, I tried to consider maybe converting one of these to, um, to filter the air, but I quickly realized that there are four good reasons why this isn't gonna work. And I'm gonna go over those one at a time, and I will show you through this cutaway how it is that I overcame the problems that you'll have with this type of a unit, okay? So the first thing, as I was looking at it, I noticed that there's a little check valve up here that these things are designed for pressure. They're not designed for a vacuum. 
And uh, the first thing you would have, I would have to do is I would have to take this check valve out of here and I would have to epoxy this thing closed because this thing is, is a vacuum leak. But more than that, I want to talk to you about this. If you'll go in there to where your vacuum or your freeze dryer is and you'll look at the door while it is um, under vacuum, you'll notice that the door has pressed itself against the seal. And you'll be able to tell that by the width of that, that dark ring just underneath the door where the rubber is coming in contact with the plexiglass. And then when you release the pressure, you'll watch that ring. It'll get narrow and narrow and narrower until you can actually open up the door. That is because that door is free floating. The door has to be free floating because what happens is as the vacuum rises, the vacuum actually presses that door harder against that rubber ring and the tighter the seal. Well, this, because it screws on, and I'll go ahead and put this back in there, because it screws on, does not allow this canister to free float against the seal that's in here. So when you get, when you draw a vacuum, this thing isn't going to move, and that's a problem. Eventually, that's going to make it leak, because like I say, these things were designed for internal pressure, not internal vacuum. Okay, and what I have done to, uh, to overcome that is I'm going to take these off here. I'll explain what these are here in a little bit. But the door to this unit is free-floating. You can see it goes in here. And it'll sit up against those um, O-rings, and this is held in there, but it doesn't lock this in. All it does is press up against it so that when the vacuum pump turns on, it'll suck this cap here down against those O-rings, and, and it forms a very good seal. And it works. It works very, very well. And I use these clamps simply to hold it up against the O-ring. And it's, there's nothing screwing it on, there's nothing clamping it on or, uh, or holding it on. But when that thing draws a vacuum, this cap will hold a vacuum. In, and I've seen the vacuum in this thing get down below 300 millitors, almost to 200 millitors, which is really excellent. It's as good as if you didn't have this um, between your freeze dryer and your filter. So that's the first reason. The second reason is this material right here is hard. This is, there is no flex in this at all, which means if you, even if you do manage to get a vacuum in this, it's only about, I'd say, maybe a quarter of an inch thick on these walls. And as you apply a vacuum and then you let the vacuum go and apply a vacuum and let the vacuum go, this stuff has been known to crack. These will develop small, um, um, almost imperceptible fissures in them that will get bigger and bigger and bigger and it'll start to leak. This has been designed so that with ABS plastic, which does give a little bit, okay, it had, it's more flexible than this hard plastic. And because of the way I've designed it, I'll take this filter material out. This is all we use here is a little bit of, of toilet tissue. But you'll see this wall here, that wall's a half an inch thick, okay? And that wall, that half an inch thick wall is all the way through this, and the end cap is actually over an inch thick, and the acrylic in this piece right here is three quarters of an inch thick. So this thing is heavy duty all around. It's, it's more heavy duty than this, and uh, this won't be prone to cracking. So that's reason number two that I don't like to use this. Reason number three is this. This is the filtration material. This one here is designed for water. It, uh, it does what it does very, very well. But the instructions will even tell you that this will drop your water pressure uh, going through it by about five pounds. Okay, so you can expect that, you can expect that to happen. And you don't want um, a unit like this presenting such a, a large amount of resistance to airflow uh, like this would. Okay, and that's why I, I use this in a long length, and you can, you, it, I stuff it in here, but once you stuff it in here, this has some very light toilet tissue rolled up and put in here, which is very efficient. It's all you need to, uh, to capture particulate. This doesn't do real well with uh, water vapor, okay? But water vapor is not 
really what you want to be concerned about. Water vapor won't damage that pump the way particulate and sludge like you saw in here will. And um, how I got this much sludge in there incidentally was I ran a batch and then what I do uh, after I run a batch if I'm going to use the freeze dryer as a uh, vacuum packer I will avoid changing the oil because uh, I, I do change the oil between every batch so I'll avoid changing the oil long enough to do my uh, vacuum packing and then I'll, then I'll change the oil and, and, and refresh the oil and, uh, and then I'll set up for the next batch. Well, it just so happens that after that batch was done, I had set up to do the vacuum packing. I vacuum packed about, I think it was 12 or 14 Mylar bags, which means I had to run the vacuum packer about four times to vacuum pack that many uh, Mylar bags. And then I did something that I shouldn't have done. I mean, I just forgot, is when I put the new batch in, I forgot to change the oil. And so I let that oil run for another 55, 60 hours on, a, on another batch. And this was the result. Most of that sludge that you see in there came out of one oil change. And it came out looking like mud. And to be honest with you, I had to change that oil in, about four times in a row. Put the oil clean oil in it run it real good and uh, and then take it out run it in and put it in the filter the the Brita filter unit and then put clean oil in it again and then run it for about a half an hour then take it out and I had to do that about four times and what that told me was that if you allow the oil to get really dirty just because you change it doesn't mean that that dirt and sludge and everything that's inside that oil pan is it's okay to mix that with clean oil because it's not the sludge will just propagate um, it'll grow. You've got, I'm sure you got bacteria in here and you've got particulate in here and you've got a lot of stuff in here that's just not clean and you want to take care of that. What I ended up having to do after this was taking the oil, um, the oil field pump out, taking the canister off and washing it out with uh, a good heavy soap and detergent and washing the, the pump mechanism off on the outside. But another thing that was I was concerned about was that oil was already inside the pump mechanism, and you don't want to take that pump mechanism apart. It you'll you'll never get it put back together um, with the specs that are necessary to make the thing work. You'll end up tossing it and and getting a new pump. So don't take the pump mechanism apart. Just take the oil pan off, clean it, and then you still might have to run a couple of batches of oil through it before your oil comes out relatively clean after a batch in which right now it does it comes out real clean especially since I've been using this now one of the other things that that I don't like about this is the fact that the air goes in one end and comes out the other end both of them on top of the filter okay and what that'll do that that's the fourth reason I don't like it because what that does is because it's a vacuum it's going to leak at the base of this unit and at the top, okay? It's not going to want to go through that filtration material because that filtration material is going to represent a, um, the path of most resistance. And so I don't think that, that this is going to work very well. Um, I might set this up if I decide I want to do an oil filtration system for the vacuum pump, but uh, I've decided not to use that and I've decided to go this route. One of the other things I don't like about this is the fact that some people will say, well, Evan, can't you just take the canister out of there and just, you know, stuff toilet paper down in there? Isn't that good enough? Well, the answer is no, because simply because that air is going to go in, it's going to go, it's going to skim along the top of whatever filtration material you have in there, and it's going to come out. It's not going to be filtered at all. You might as well not have anything at all in there. And also, you stand the chance of, during the initial startup of the vacuum, of sucking some of this filtration material into the unit and having it end up inside the vacuum. And that can be a problem that's even worse than the little bit of um, the food particulate and dust that you might get into there. So what I've done with this to overcome that is there is a chamber here. Okay, it's, it's back in this end that the filtration material will sit up against and it won't go any, any, any nearer to where the vacuum hole is. Okay, so there's no chance of any of this filter material getting into the vacuum hole. So there you have it. You have um, heavy duty. 
you have uh, a system set up where the air goes in one side, it is forced over the full length of the filter material, and it comes out the other side and uh, goes to the vacuum, and it's, it'll be very, very clean. And I think that that's something that um, is very necessary. Now, since I've been doing this, using the freeze dryer as a vacuum packer, I haven't seen dirty oil, okay? I haven't. Now, you might ask, Evan, do you see any particulate inside the filter material in here? No, you don't, because we're talking about uh, dust size material and you're not talking about filtering a lot of air but the dust and the particulate from the food that does make it into the freeze dryer you may not be able to see it if you were to filter it out but filtering it out does make a big difference so anyhow if you're interested in making one of these um, they're not expensive you'll, you'll spend about a hundred maybe a hundred and twenty dollars in part and in video two I lay out all the parts, I tell you exactly what you need, but I am going to tell you something here that I'm, that's just kind of an update. Here's something else you're going to need that I don't talk about in video two. This is 100% pure silicone. And after you make the unit, I found that there is a chance that this unit will leak around this O-ring right here. In the channel you'll you'll discover what this channel is there you can see the channel and what uh, what I did to overcome that was an easy fix but um, I took some of this silicone and I put you know open this up and I put a little bead just a tiny bit down into the bottom of that all the way around and then I set the o-ring down into it So anyhow, we'll end this video, it's relatively short, right here. Um, in video two, we will, um, I'll show you and give you the parts list and the prefab. Okay, things that you'll have to order, things that you'll have to have on hand, things that you'll have to do with some of the, the parts. In other words, you'll, you'll have to pre-cut these, uh, these inner pieces to size. Uh, there's some beveling that's going to go on. There's a, a piece of three-quarter inch um, acrylic that you're going to have to get. It's um, 12 inches square. You can order it from Amazon, but that has to come in. I'll show you how to fabricate the pieces that go in here. Uh, this divider that prevents the uh, filter material from coming in, coming in contact with the end of the vacuum hose and other stuff like the O-rings. I'll, I'll give you a complete list of everything that you're going to need. Okay, and then in video three, once you've gathered all the necessary parts and, and tools and everything together that I'll show you, um, I will actually take you out into the garage and we will build this unit. You'll be able to watch me build this uh, from the ground up. And you'll, by the time you're finished, you're going to understand why this unit will do the job of removing dust and particulate from out of your system so that it doesn't make it into your vacuum pump and you're going to understand why that is extraordinarily important. It could add 25 to 30 percent more time on to how long your vacuum pump will last before it wears out and has to be um, replaced. And for me that, that's quite a savings. That alone will more than pay for the cost of building this uh, torpedo filter. I like to call this a torpedo filter. Um, Anyhow, with that, I'm going to end it here, and I'll see you on video two. I'm Evan Rowell, and this is Critical Thinking about dust.